I think we're going to start today by answering questions about the play and about how it was turned into a musical by Duncan Sheik and Stephen Sater <laughs> and why we're doing the play now and is that actually Sasquatch there on the wallpaper? <laughs> I'm Jeff Lentz. I'm the senior artist in residence for the departments of theater and music here at Albright. So I am both the director, the stage director, and the music director for this production. Spring Awakening is a show that I've wanted to do here at Albright um, for over a decade. I, it was one of those visceral experiences when I first saw the show. I was enraptured by the work, but then also could not wait to get to work on it myself with our students. The source material for the musical is the play Spring Awakening um, by Frank Wiedekind, which was written in 1891. This is a very timeless piece. It deals with adolescent angst and that tension of, um, of opposites between what the society and what the parents think the students should be studying, thinking, uh, experiencing, and what they themselves are beginning to understand about life and adulthood. The theater is always a very potent mirror to society. And we find ourselves uh, in a climate right now that is asking us once again, should we be banning books? Should we be limiting the amount of information we give to young people? Um, and this play dramatizes the tragedy of such an idea. It was revolutionary in its very frank discussion about topics that are important to young people uh, and about um, sort of family strife and issues of what we should be teaching in the schools and what we should be, what we should be allowing students to know and to do. Um, but that misinformation is what leads you know, to, to the, the dramatic climax. So it was a, it was a play that, that, that was banned for quite a long time. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's, a really, it's a really important work and I think a perfect vehicle for a college um, when we're here you know, trying to awaken our students to what life is really like. Tartuffe was also previously a banned show um, for its own content. Is there a theme running in this year's shows, or it just happened that we have a number of <laughs> previously banned shows showing up in our stage? Well, I think that's an amazing thing, you know, that we would pick several shows in this season that are controversial. That's really what the theater is for, is to provide us with an arena in which to grapple and commune with each other about what are we doing in our society and our, in our own private lives as well. So is it currently on Broadway? No, it opened in 2007 on Broadway with much acclaim um, and had a, you know, a, a wonderful run on Broadway. Uh, it actually has already had a revival on Broadway thanks to Deaf West Theater. It was this beautiful amalgam of the show with, um, with hearing impaired actors as well. There's also been a recent documentary and reunion concert with the original cast. So there's, it's kind of in the zeitgeist right now, but it's, it's such a timeless piece that I can imagine this is just going to get done over and over and over and over. Was that uh, first run in 2007, was that the first one it ever had on Broadway? Yes, it yes it was. So in the script for the musical, uh, it asks for just a very open, spare space. Uh, and we've actually kind of done that. It's a, it's a very o open plan. But the original play had sort of expressionistic tendencies, if you will. Um, and so there was, there was a lot of sort of shadow and light in the, in the play. Um, and so Cocole and Liz and Jen and I decided that we wanted to sort of explore the more original roots of the play. So it's, it's going to be very, um, very, very dark. Uh, and um, what we've actually done is created sort of three areas of the stage, sort of the sort of song space, as you will, with the sort of traditional footlight area. There's this incredible proscenium uh, that is a, a wallpapered proscenium that actually creates a, a ceiling as well. 
Um, that's the sort of interior space. So if you're inside, you use these doors in these walls. And then back behind it is a, I, I want to call it a gallery space, a sort of distillation of a sky and a tree and a place to sit, um, this outdoor space. So it's, it's got a, s a soft blending between reality and illusion. This is going to be different, if for no other reason than because in the original production, the, one of the major visual focuses, if you will, or the sort of gist of the show was that s the actors would sort of play characters that were in 1891. And then when the, when the music needed to start, which was a sort of you know, a rock musical, if you will, um, the original cast members would reach into their pockets into their coat pockets and pull out a microphone and sort of turn to the audience and sing. So this, this sort of dis, you know, uh, removing reality for a moment, distancing effect, if you will. Um, and we're not doing that. We're, we, we decided we wanted to dig into the text and see what happened if there was a, there was a more of, a, uh, more of, a, more of a, an amalgam between the scenes and the songs. This is a play with a lot of dark themes in it. Um, and it, it gets to sort of the root of some of the, the, the worst tendencies of, of human beings, of power and brutality. And um, it, it is, it's a piece that it, with the, as each scene comes around, we, we, we talk about it. We talk about the, the need or the reason to give voice to these kinds of topics. Um, I do think that the play ultimately is more successful at providing the right vehicle. The, the songs give a, a sort of soften the edges of the piece, if you will, and allow a sort of inner life of the characters to come out as opposed to constantly being acted upon and deal with these incredible issues. Uh, it gives a time for the audience to sort of commune with them and dig into the sort of emotional core of the characters. This is an amazing addition to what we do here. So Ebony Hicks, uh, soon to be graduating senior, is taking this on as a, a senior capstone project. So she has been our intimacy coordinator. It's something that she's interested in doing um, in, into her career as well. Um, the idea behind it is really to make sure that there's a safe space for actors to, to deal with the topics, to deal with the realities of what it's like to embody them, and to have a more choreographed approach to the idea of touch and consent and intimacy, so that an actor can know where they're going to be touched or how, um, how they can bring themselves to the, the topic without it doing any emotional damage to them as well. So there are check-ins, um, checking in with your fellow cast members, letting them know if there perhaps are areas of their body that they're very sensitive to, and maybe let's not think about touching me here. You know, really giving agency to everybody to feel as if it's okay to say that I have limitations, right? Um, and that maybe even on this particular night of rehearsal like I um, I'm not feeling a hundred percent so can we do um, so if we're not going to do a kiss for example we can do a sort of you know fist bump or touch on the nose or something like that that just is a place marker for it so it's it's actually it's so much easier for me as a director to have that and to have a team that's working to make sure that the there's um, advocacy for the the sort of rights and responsibilities of the performers Musicals are always an, uh, a welcome challenge. Uh, in this production, I function, I guess because I'm partially, because I'm in both departments and my training is in both of these areas. I am the music director and the, the director for this, um, which is helpful to me because it really helps me sort of start the conversation with the actors about the text and what, why we're singing what we're singing. Um, the last time we did a musical here at Albright was um, a year before the pandemic. We did Sweeney Todd, um, and we'd done several musicals just before that. Um, Albright has uh, sanctioned a, a new vocal performance 
co-major that will start in the fall. And um, so we're hoping to create a, a, a wonderful synergy between the, the study of singing and the study of theater. Um, and so I think we'll, we'll probably see more, more musical titles uh, you know, on our seasons in the, in the years to come. So it's really all about the necessary skill sets that young singers or singer performers will, will need out in the industry. So there's, think of it as a sort of there's a, a two-pronged road. If you're a commercial um, or jazz singer, you would combine the study of vocal performance with the music industry and music production side of the music department. If you're more of a stage performer, whether that's musical theater or opera, or whatever, you would combine that with theater. The, the skill sets for the musical, for the, for the vocal performance students will include um, theory and oral training, diction and phonetics, um, musical styles and repertoire, vocal pedagogy, which is really, sort of really important for those who might want to go out and teach voice. Um, they, they have to have a residency, a two-year residency with a choir. They have to have multiple, multiple semesters of voice lessons. And then they capstone it with either a recital uh, or a or a, you know a major role in uh, a show up up here in the in the uh, Albright Theater. Yeah, this has been an incredible year. Uh, you know, this time last year we were all sort of biting our nails, going, "Oh my gosh, we we need a, a tech director, master electrician. We need a new costume designer and and shop manager. We need a new lighting designer." Oh, oh. and luckily we're by the by the grace of the gods, uh, we have an amazing team of people that have brought a, a fresh approach. Uh, you know, they're, they're bringing industry standard practice to what we're doing. Um, they've, they've brought an energy into the room that, I mean, just yesterday, um, we had a, a work call, if you will, and there were 16 students working in here from 10 to five, just hanging lights, helping with the set, working downstairs in the costume room, getting the space ready. Um, it, it's just, it's, it's an incredible development for us to really make this as a, a, like a regional theater company. We're an ensemble of, of artists um, get together and say, I might be on stage, but I also have to help with that. And I have to work over here and I have to work over here. And so it's, it's, um, it's wonderful. I think one of the unplanned but wonderful things that's happened is our new faculty have asked so many questions. They've talked to the students about what works, what doesn't work, what do we, what do we need in this program? What's your favorite part of this? Why did you come here? What could we possibly do? What's missing? Um, and so all of those questions to just, even if, even if, even if we left everything the same, it's, it was a time for everybody to sort of say, huh, how, how do we do this here? And then how are, do we best prepare you to enter the industry? So um, it's, it's been, a, it, it's been a, a, a wonderful growing experience. It's really all centered on giving students as much opportunity and hands-on experience uh, as, as possible. Um, and many hands make light work. So that's, that's been wonderful. Yeah, well, as, as always, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to practice what we preach you know, in our classes about collaboration and about being open to new ideas. Uh, and whether that's the way Jen, as a lighting designer, approaches the idea of directionality of light and, and the particular lights that she wants to use and her sort of color, idea of color and, and, and how that helps with the storytelling with Liz um, in the costume shop, you know, one of the first places we started with just a real deep dive into our, into our uh, costume storage. What do we have? How have things been done in the past? How might we take things and, you know, and um, reinvent them in a way? Um, Liz has a, a, a wonderfully rich uh, sense of color. Color is very important to her. And again, all in service of the play and of the storytelling. Um, but I, it, it's been wonderful for me to, uh, to have to open up my sort of aesthetic and just say, cool, let's try that. Why not? Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. 
Um, and yeah, that's exactly, exactly what we've done. This show is so hard emotionally. The topics are so fierce, but the, the music and the lyrics just pulled at your soul. And so the level of connection that's possible between these performers in this present moment with this present audience is enormous. And so I'm so looking forward to having our actors being able to sort of open themselves to the possibility of allowing an audience to join that work and to, you know, and to complete that circuit, if you will. Some plays sort of present themselves and we sort of, thank you for coming, here's our show, let's go. This really has to be about, you know, ex exposing yourself emotionally. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that because our, our students are just it, it's so inspiring on a daily basis. So I'm looking forward to that. And I'm, I'm looking forward in the, in the sort of near future. Um, we have, the, odd, oddly enough, the, the, the lobby renovation has sort of invigorated the way we sort of open the door to the audience, right? So I'm looking forward to bringing that energy into our space speaking about how important color is. I'm looking forward to a, a sort of, hopefully in the near future, sort of a transformation of our space. That, because I think, I think environment is really important for our audiences and for our, you know, for, for those that we work with. Uh, I'm looking forward to the, to the new students that may not have thought about Albright uh, because we didn't do enough of this or enough of that. Um, I'm looking forward to the, uh, the many, many more collaborations um, with, my, with my colleagues um, and continuing this tradition of asking the hard questions, offering pieces that do push our audiences to sort of say, hmm, what, yeah, what, what, are, what are we doing here and how do we fix this? So celebrating the best of what theater can offer, not just a college campus, but a community and, you know, and, and a larger society. So I, I think the future is very bright.